So the first thing we need to do is give our project a name. This is quite important, especially because we'll need to save our project so we can store our progress as we build the game. Let's start by deleting the default sprite. Now, if you're coming from Scratch Junior, you might want to add a sprite or a character, or maybe even add a background. But for now, what we're going to do is create a new sprite, and this sprite will become the head of our snake. Let's go ahead and use the drawing tools. First, select the rectangle tool. You can also control the outline or border of your rectangle, and you can change its fill color as well. Reduce the outline thickness to two. Now zoom into the canvas. Click and hold to draw a rectangle. Then move the rectangle to the center until it snaps into place. This is the select tool. It allows us to move our drawings, and we can also transform the shape. Like rotating or resizing it, we can delete anything we don't need by pressing the delete key. Let's draw another rectangle and make sure its size is exactly 32 by 32. Let's zoom in a little more. The next tool is called Reshape. The Reshape tool allows us to add or remove points from our shape. And with this tool, we can literally reshape our drawing however we want. Let's try it out. We want to round the top edges of the rectangle. So we'll add points, then use the Reshape tool to drag those points inward. Next, let's add some eyes. You can use any shape you want, circles or rectangles. Feel free to play around with the fill color and outline. Now let's change the color of the snake's body. Use the Select tool, then go to the fill color settings and set Color, 5, Saturation, 60, Brightness, 100. Once everything looks good, we can group our shapes into one object. Now let's make a copy of this sprite. Remove the eyes from the copy, then increase the outline thickness and reposition the shape. Great, we now have our snake head. Let's give the first costume a name, like Zero. You can also duplicate the drawing to create more versions. Ungroup the shapes to reposition things if needed. When you're done adjusting, just regroup them again. We can also rename each costume to match a direction. The first one will be up, then right, left, and down, and that's it. We're done. Now make sure the current costume is set to right. Lastly, let's rename the sprite itself to Snakehead. We can save our document, but make sure you are logged in. Hit save and wait. Head over to the variables section. First, delete the default variable that Scratch gives us. Then, let's create a new variable. We'll name it direction. Make sure it's set to for all sprites. Next, create a second variable called game running, and also make sure it's for all sprites. Great! So now we have our two variables. You'll notice that direction is currently set to zero. Now we can do a couple of things. For example, we can set a variable and we can also change a variable. We can even duplicate a code block instead of building each one from scratch. Let's do the same for the change variable block. You'll see that we now have a drop down menu where we can choose which variable we want to set or change, either direction or game running. We can set the direction to up. When we click the block, you'll see that the direction changes to up on the stage display. We can also change the game running variable. For example, we can set it to true. 
When we click it, it updates to true as expected. The change variable block adds a number to the current value. Right now, it changes direction by one. Clicking it will show the direction increase from one to two, three, four, and so on. This works the same for game running. You can also change a variable to any text, not just a number. But for now, let's set direction to right as the default value and set game running to true. Now we want our script to start when the green flag is clicked. Go to the events category and drag out the when green flag clicked block. Next, go to the motion blocks. These are responsible for moving our sprite. We can move horizontally using the X position and vertically using the Y position. Let's center our snake head by using the go to X0, Y0 block. Now drag out a forever loop. Inside that loop, we'll add an if block. If statements are very important, they allow us to make decisions in our game. Quick tip. If you're new to if statements, check out our Blockly if statement video. If statements rely on something called Boolean values, these are either true or false. Let's go to the operators blocks and drag out the equality operator equals. You can ask questions like, is 50 equal to 50? This would return true. If you change one side to three, like three equals 50, it will return false. We use this to check conditions such as, is the direction right? Is the game running? If the answer is true, we run a block of code. Let's go back to our forever loop. Inside it, we'll check. If the game is not running, we should stop the script. Otherwise, while the game is running, we check the current direction and move the player accordingly. We use an if-else block here. Let's check. If the direction is equal to right, if it is, we want to move the head to the right. To do this, we use change x by 20. This works similar to the change variable block, but it affects the sprite's position. Now let's add movement for the other directions. Inside the else part, add another if-else block. Before continuing, let's test the code. Our snake head moves right by 20 pixels per frame. This is because the direction is set to right and the game is running. Let's add the remaining directions. Duplicate the equality operator, change it to check for left, up, and down. Duplicate the change by block and change X or Y as needed. Make sure each condition is inside the else of the previous if-else block. In the very last else, just add a wait 0.2 seconds block to slow the loop slightly. Now let's listen for key events. To change direction, we'll use W for up, S for down, A for left, D for right. Go to events and drag when key pressed. From the dropdown, choose W. Inside it, add an if block. Let's talk about not logic. We can negate a condition using the not operator. Example, 50 equals 50 is true. Not 50 equals 50 becomes false. This is how we prevent the snake from reversing into itself. In classic snake, you can't go left if you're already moving right. It would crash. So before we turn up, we first check if the direction is not down. If that's true, then we can safely change the direction to up. Use the set direction to up block. Let's test it out. Hmm, nothing is happening. Here's the problem. 
We're changing direction, but we didn't change the correct position axis. Right and left equals X position. Up and down equals Y position. For left and down, use negative values. Let's test again. Now when we press W, the head changes direction upward. Let's also change the costume when we change direction. Go to Looks and drag the Switch Costume block. Set it to Up to match the direction. Also, let's set the default costume to right at the start of the game. Now, duplicate the key press logic for A left S to down, D to the right. Remember to update the direction check, the set direction value, the costume. And now we have all our directions working and the sprite turns and changes costume based on the keys we press. Awesome job.